and a slur of negative headlines, casting a cloud over Harry and Meghan's trip. Prince Harry, has he finally snapped? It was meant to be a 10-day royal tour of Africa with baby Archie in tow, the first for the new family of three, spotlighting charities along the way. But thousands of miles away from home, they could not escape the British tabloids. A bitter legal battle began. Late last week, Buckingham Palace confirming Prince Harry is suing the owners of both the Sun and the Mirror in connection to the illegal interception of voicemail messages. There's always a risk for Prince Harry in filing this kind of lawsuit. There's the potential for backlash. There's the potential that if they lose, that it could make the tabloids even more aggressive. It's an interesting move by the royals here. British website Byline Investigates, which broke the story, claims Harry's going after the paper's owners and senior managers, accusing them of covering up criminal behavior that dates back over a decade, including allegations reporters and private investigators accessed his mother, Princess Diana's voicemails in the past. All anyone has talked about since the penultimate day of that tour are Harry and Meghan's lawsuits. The other lawsuit coming from the Duchess of Sussex, striking back against the Mail on Sunday and its parent company, accusing them of being on a campaign to publish false and deliberately derogatory stories. When you continue and constantly see and hear negativity, it can be overwhelming. You can feel powerless and lost. You can feel different, confused, or like you don't belong. Tensions reaching a boiling point after the Mail published a private letter that the Duchess wrote to her estranged father. In response, Prince Harry got personal. In a statement, Harry writing, I have been a silent witness to her private suffering for too long. To stand back and do nothing would be contrary to everything we believe in. Harry adding, my deepest fear is history repeating itself. I've seen what happens when someone I love is commoditized to the point that they are no longer treated or seen as a real person. I lost my mother, and now I watch my wife falling victim to the same powerful forces. These legal cases seem to be ways that he is able to specifically find ways that he can fight back through the courts. We know that he's been furious about the coverage of Meghan, and it seems that it's possible that that has triggered something in him that has reignited his anger over his mother's relationship with the media. The Duke going on to accuse the paper of strategically omitting portions of the letter to purposefully mislead readers. The Mail on Sunday denies that the letter was edited in any way that changed its meaning and that they stand by the story it published and will be defending this case vigorously. She's got a very good argument on the copyright claim because this is a letter that she wrote and under British law, no matter who has it, the person who wrote the letter owns the copyright. Her privacy claim is a much tougher one. Have you spoken to, to Megan recently? Meghan's rocky relationship with her father has been a tabloid favorite. As for this recent letter controversy, Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, is firing back. This weekend, telling the Mail on Sunday he only released that letter to protect his reputation after he says his daughter's friends misrepresented its contents to People magazine. Thomas saying, I have to defend myself. I only released parts of the letter because other parts were so painful. The letter didn't seem loving to me. I found it hurtful. Neither the palace nor the papers are addressing the specific allegations further. Harry and Meghan say the case is being privately funded and any damages won will be donated to an anti-bullying charity. Between them, these newspaper groups own a huge percentage of the print titles across the country. Um, and, you know, for them to be taken on at the same time by members of the royal family does feel like we are in uncharted territory. This latest drama made for tabloids has been brewing since the beginning of their relationship. It's very rare to hear that side of the royal family, um, but we have heard it from Harry before. Just a few months into their budding romance, British tabloids descended on them with racially charged headlines and commentary, like this one from the Daily Mail that read, Harry's girl is almost straight out of Compton. She's been subject to incredible online abuse, um, as has Kate Middleton, but I, I think there is this component of race that Harry addressed even before they were married. Prince Harry defended Meghan in an unprecedented royal statement, calling out the racial undertones of comment pieces and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls. It's a shame that that is the climate in this world to focus that much on that or that that would be discriminatory in that sense. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from. And we have never put any focus on that. We've just mm. focused on 
who we are as a couple. Unfortunately, there are also certain classes of people who will dehumanize women, who will dehumanize people of color. And Megan ticks off all of those boxes. And I think that as we both report on her as the media and as we look at her as spectators, we have to remember this is a human being and she has an entire interior life that we are not privy to. At first, their coping strategy would be to ignore the headlines. I think we were just hit so hard at the beginning with a lot of mistruths that I made the choice to not read anything, positive or negative. It just didn't make sense, and instead we focused all of our energies just on nurturing our relationship. On us. Yeah. On us. But Harry's recent move sparking controversy. Among the biggest critics, Piers Morgan, the former editor of the Daily Mirror and a possible target of one of the lawsuits. They're not private people, they're public people in that sense. But when Harry compared this to Diana, I don't see Meghan Markle as being anywhere near the level of fame of Princess Diana. And this weekend sarcastically tweeting, let's all give them the privacy they purport to crave and spare them the torment of having their myriad causes get huge beneficial publicity. Personally, I think that's a very dangerous game to play for members of the royal family. Nobody disputes the fact that phone hacking was an awful thing, but I think by waging a sort of war like this, I think Harry and Meghan may find the benefits, whatever they may be, less favourable than the very long protracted battle that they are going to be facing. The couples now determined to not let these legal battles overshadow the work they did in Africa. Well, the Commonwealth is a very diverse place, right, with 53 countries, and so being a part of this family and the platform that comes with that is an incredible responsibility that I take really seriously. Um, being able to be in Africa and South Africa, it's my first time being in this country, has been really powerful. Now, the question remains what that embrace will look like back at home.